chat, chapter 1094 of the One Piece manga came out, and oh boy did Oda go crazy with this one. Also, can we just admire this color spread? Man, it's so beautiful. What's up guys, Rest is Gambly here, and in today's video, we'll be going over chapter 1094 of the One Piece manga. A lot of stuff happened this time around, so all you have to do is sit back and relax and watch the whole video. If you're enjoying the One Piece manga right now and want to see more of this, go ahead and subscribe. After all, it's a win-win for both of us. We start the chapter off exactly where we left off from the last one, Atlas giving the command to the pacifista to eradicate all marines on the island. We get a reminder of the pacifista control hierarchy with the panel showing us the Vegapunks are second. And so the robots start attacking the marines. The marines realize that it's the doing of Vegapunk and says that Vegapunk might be coming down. Meanwhile, the castles with Stella are looking for Bonnie. Frankie is concerned about the Vega tank driving straight down because it would mean they'll just fall. But Vegapunk tells him that the tires are made of the same kind of sky cloud as the road, so it would stick regardless. Sanji is yelling out Bonnie's name and then he finally finds her. Frankie is shook and asks him if he's positive, but Sanji replies saying, Has my lady radar ever been wrong? This is a clear callback to Wano when Sanji got his ass captured by Black Maria. Man, that was crazy. If you don't remember, while Luffy, Jinbei, and Sanji were running around Onigashima, Sanji sensed a damsel in distress, something Luffy couldn't even do. This feat was something that made Luffy even admit he has more to learn about observation hockey. And so Sanji was correct, but it ended up being a trap. Vegapunk says it doesn't sound scientific, but he will have faith in him. Sanji thanks him, but tells them that the Vega tank is too damn slow for him. So he jumps out and maneuvers across Egghead like Garp did in Hachinosu. This is crazy. My go Sanji's speed has been emphasized so many times since Wano, and this is just another one of them. This is why I truly think he's top 3 in the verse in speed. He's him. We cut to Bonnie who's still on the battlefield and the marines are still trying to find her. Her reaction to Atlas changing the controls of the pacifista is that it's good so now she can probably get away. But just as he says that, a marine attacks the rock she was hiding behind and they realize that's where she was. Bonnie jumps into the air and uses a new named attack, Near Death Experience. The marines who got hit by it literally hallucinate their death or them being dead, so they drop in terror. This is a scary ass power and we keep on seeing how much hacks Bonnie truly has. Bonnie tries to get away but then there's a pacifista that's facing her way and a marine on top of it. Bonnie is shook because all the pacifistas should have been on her side. But it's because of this old ass marine that this is possible. She says, Don't panic dearie, it's only this one unit that hasn't been affected by the new orders. I made it my personal ride. I'm a driver woman who can hijack anything thanks to the ride ride fruit. I take it offing you will lift the age curse on my subordinates. And so she uses the pacifista to shoot a laser at Bonnie but Bonnie doesn't move because that's her dad. Before the laser hits her though, Sanji takes her away and jumps out of the way with her. This is the second time in one arc that Sanji has literally saved someone from a light speed attack by the way. Sanji's stocks are going up. Sanji tells Bonnie, you can't let yourself freeze like that. Bonnie is shocked that she got saved by this handsome ass man. He then goes on to tell her that he found out that her dad was Kuma but that she's gotta keep a cool head regardless. But just as they're talking, the marine jumps in to attack them again and so Sanji carries Bonnie away. Vegapunk tells Sanji to hop back into the Vega tank and they're about to get away since the pacifista are on their side once more. We cut to the lava stratum where we continue Luffy vs Kizaru. Kizaru tells him, I'm afraid I've got a job to do and I can't finish it if we're going to keep playing around. He says this then pants. Luffy replies saying that this is his job to keep him occupied so he doesn't finish his mission and he pants as well. So Kizaru just isn't with the bullshit, he turns around and dashes off the scene because this is just a waste of time. But just then, Luffy, Zoro, Kizaru, and Luchi notice something. Jinbei mentions that he senses an ominous presence and the marines are worried about a possibility. Then someone on the island yells out new orders for the pacifista. They say, pacifista, seize all action immediately and the pacifista actually stop. The Vegapunk are confused as to why the hell they actually did stop. Why aren't they trying to protect them anymore? Atlas mentions that the only one with higher order than them are the five elders. The next panel we get to see a super weird thing, a magic circle. The people in the Vega tank realize that something is coming so they think it's urgent to get the hell out of there. Then we get an announcement. 
All Marines on the island be advised, Saint Saturn of the Five Elders is about to make landfall on Egghead Island. The Marines are shook. Why the hell is this guy here? The magical circle bursts into flames with black lightning coming out and the announcement continues. Any marine below the rank of Commodore is hereby ordered to avert their gaze. Transgressors will not be forgiven. The people on the Vega tank are shook from the explosion and react to the announcement. The Vegapunks of course know who they are but Frankie and Sanji don't. Stella keeps the description short and sweet. They are the most powerful authority figures in the world. Frankie was shook at this, but Vegapunk says that that doesn't matter because they're getting the hell out of there. The magic circle starts to open and Sanji reacts to it saying something is coming out. Y'all notice how this reaction looks exactly like Luffy's reaction to Gizaru? <laughs> A father marine actually makes eye contact with the elder. Before that, his friend warns him not to look, but he still ends up doing it. Once he actually makes eye contact, his head literally explodes, and we finally see it. Saint Jay Garcia is in his awakened zone that looks like a bull spider. When the leaks came out, there was mythology lore connected to it, but I literally do not remember. Saturn says he hasn't been outside in a minute. Bonnie looks at Saturn and is confused about what the hell she's looking at, and Sanji isn't even worried about that. They're getting attacked from above. A light beam attacks the clouds that the Vega tank was sticking to, and we see that it was Kizaru. Luffy finally catches up to Kizaru, who is already sitting back and attacking Vegapunk. Luffy tells him to chill the hell out and pulls out his muscle form. Kizaru just looks at him and asks him, haven't you reached your limit in that form yet? Frankie tells him that they're counting on him and Kizaru shoots at Luffy. Luffy dodges but then starts spinning. Kizaru is confused and then Luffy uses Gum Gum White Star Gun. Guys, I need you to understand what the hell this is. Y'all remember when Luffy did this against Kaido? Well, this is even stronger than that. Luffy has added muscle to it. It's advanced Conker's Hockey and if you didn't notice on his arm, it has fire on it. I think we can easily assume that this has the properties of red rock or that his acceleration was so fast from spinning that it caused fire. It punches through his head and Kizaru says this isn't good. Now, I don't know if this is in troll tone, but we'll see next chapter. Just then, Luffy actually reaches his limit. Luffy is falling down and Saturn looks at him saying, nigga. Whoa, 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 bro. <laughs> I met Nika bro, Nika, Nika, Nika. Kizaru gets thrown into the building and Luffy falls down. But the Vega tank still got thrown down from Kizaru and we see everyone fall. In the final page, we see Saturn looking down on the ones who fell down. Vegapunk asks if he's saying Saturn and he replies with, in the flesh. That's cold as hell, I'm not gonna lie bro. But as they have their little dialogue, Bonnie enters another memory. I suppose it's Saturn telling Vegapunk to erase all of Kuma's memories. It says, I have given the order Vegapunk, erase his freedom completely, make sure no trace of him remains. As Bonnie thinks about this, she dashes out of Sanji's hands with a sword. Uh, before we continue, where the hell is Bonnie getting all these weapons from? Is she hiding them up her ass? She dashes towards Saturn and stabs him in the chest and he starts bleeding. The chapter ends with the eye contact between Saturn and Bonnie. This was a crazy chapter. I don't know about y'all, but this is an easy 9.5 or even 10 out of 10. We're finally getting to see what the hell was in the room from like 10 or so chapters ago. Also, even though I like to call Sabo a fraud because of his fans, we gotta give him a little bit of praise. Not only was Saturn there in the room, but there were four other elders and the king of the world. But what did y'all think about this chapter? Let me know down in the comments. And I'll catch y'all in the next one.